So I've been just kind of spending some spare time reading some of the old Unix books. There are a lot of really cool old manuals, like the design and implementation of the Unix operating system and the Unix programming environment and all this stuff they were published in the 70s and 80s. And uh, they're pretty cool. And they have a lot of neat things about Unix that I didn't really know. Um, one of those things that I like kind of knew was how inodes worked and what they were and stuff. So I just thought I'd put together a little inodes for beginners sort of presentation at the last minute. They're kind of neat. So uh, as you may know, uh, everything in Unix is a file, pretty much everything. Um, directories are a different kind of file. Uh, devices, like hard drives, are files. Well, not hard drives exactly, but like open files. The devices are also file, uh, files. Network devices are files, so like you can write to the Ethernet port and stuff. Um, Pipes, when you have a chain of pipes in a Unix command, those are files. Standard in and standard out are treated as files according to the operating system, uh, which is all pretty cool. That's one of the things that makes Unix really neat is that everything's a file. It's a really useful abstraction and it makes uh, coding up shell utilities really nice and easy. Uh, in the Unix shell, we actually spend a lot of our time interacting with inodes though. So inodes are uh, data structures that represent a file. So what they really represent is all the metadata associated with a file. So originally, so here's the thing, we don't really know what inode stands for anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, someone asked Dennis Ritchie, one of the creators of Unix once, what it stood for, and he said he didn't really remember. Um, he guessed index node was what they meant, but yeah, whatever. So uh, each file has an associated inode and that represents the file's metadata. That metadata would be stuff like permissions and access time and who owns it, stuff like that. The inode is just another thing that's stored on the disk. It's serialized and you know stored as a sequence of bytes. And in the inode, it also references the actual location of the file in the file system. Not the path, but like, not in the file system, but rather on the hard drive. So like which cylinder it's on and that kind of thing. So I said it's metadata. Um, metadata includes the users and groups, like who owns it, who can access it. Uh, it includes what type of file it is, which could be a whole bunch of different things. Is it a file, is it a directory, is it a character device, block device, pipe, whatevs. Uh, the permissions, um, when it was accessed. Uh, the number of hard links to the file, which is kind of interesting. I'll talk about that in a minute later. But when you use the ln command to uh, link a file to create a link to a file, you're uh, adding another link to that inode, and it tracks that, and it tracks how many things link to it. Um, you also store all the disk blocks containing data. So when you, uh, when you open a file, when you read from a file, it, it looks as if it's just a serialized stream of bytes, right, just one after another. But I mean, it's not, of course, when you're, when you're storing like a big file, in the hard drive, it's broken up into chunks and those chunks are scattered all over creation and that's why defragmentation used to be a thing. Um, and it also stores the size of the file. That's a useful thing to have on hand. So um, the yeah, inode doesn't include the file paths. That's important. Um, if it did include those, that would just be a series of lies because linking becomes a thing. By the way, if I say anything that doesn't make any sense, feel free to chime <coughs> in and ask questions and stuff. Uh, so here's an example of what sort of data would be in Ninode. We have the uner user, which is me, uh, the group that they belong in, um, the users group, rather, which could be wheel or staff or users or whatever else. Um, the type of the file, the permissions associated with it, those are the standard Unix file permissions. I'm not going to go into those unless you guys want me to. Cool. Uh, <laughs> when, it w when the file was last accessed, when it was last modified, when the inode was last modified, uh, the size of the file, and then some disk addresses. I'll talk a little bit later about how those are stored. So uh, if we want to view uh, an inode number, each inode has a number, um, you can use the uh, dash li flag. If you use the i flag, that shows the inode number associated with each file. So each of these files has a number, and they're, they're sequential because I created these all at about the same time. And they're pretty long. They're big. There are a lot of things on my hard drive, so makes sense. 
Uh, we can also look up a file by its inode. So uh, there's a flag to find, which is dash inum, and then you give it an inode number, and it looks for through all the files in your current directory, and it finds the file with that inode, which is kind of cool. So if you want to create a link to a file, uh, you can use the ln command. So if we list these out, one thing that you'll notice is that there are these ones here, and then the six for the directory. So that's actually how many things, how many files are linking to that inode. So if we create a link, linking from readme.markdown to readme.new.markdown, because let's pretend git isn't a thing, um, both of these uh, now have the number two, and they both have the same uh, inode number. So these two files are pointing the same inode, which is kind of cool. When we delete a link, uh, when we were with RM, uh, it just goes away and that counter is decremented. When that counter goes down to zero, the actual file is deleted from the disk. Until then, it's just sitting there. And these links are just little links. They're just, you know, that number. So when you add links to a file, you're not like copying the whole file or anything. So I mentioned that disk addresses were a thing. Uh, <laughs> disk addresses turn out to be kind of complicated. So um, in, a, in like the standard Unix file system like UFS or ext3, I think, does this, you have uh, 15 different pointers <laughs> associated with blocks in the hard drive. A pointer is just a location. Uh, it refers to a location on the hard drive. Specifically, it refers to a block. Uh, the size of a block varies according to the file system that you're using. Usually around like 8K is pretty normal. So uh, you have 12 pointers to direct blocks. Then you have a pointer to an indirect block. And then you can have another pointer to a doubly indirect block. So an indirect block pointer points to another pointer table, all of which, whose pointers can point to blocks. And then a doubly indirect block points to another pointer table, which can point to pointer tables, all of which point to blocks. So if you have a really big file, you'll have you know, a lot of this crazy doubly indirect nonsense. Um, so that's how you actually store things. And those are all just locations of blocks on the hard drive. Does that make sense? Why do you think they went with a 15? Like, what is it? A known size? Like, mm. what's the advantage of that? Well, so having the inode uh, at a known length makes it easy to, to deal with on the hard drive. So you're, you're, you want your inode to be less than one block in size, I guess. Probably makes sense. So you've kind of got a cap as to how big it can be. Um, mm, I'm not sure why that particular number is, is there. But Four bits? Yeah. You know. Makes sense. So uh, if you want to learn more, there's a whole lot of stuff to read. Uh, <laughs> so this book is a really great intro to like how Unix works at all. Uh, this one's a really good one if you're interested in writing some C. This one's really cool because it's about how the kernel works, which is pretty neat. And these two papers are both really accessible papers. This was the paper that introduced Unix, the Unix time sharing system. It's from 1974. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to read a, a, a paper that's pretty cool, just because it's so many things that were revolutionary, revolutionary at the time, but are now like, why would we ever do it any other way? Uh, it's like, uh, it's crazy. Uh, it's so cool. It's like, hey, we've discovered this thing you can breathe called air. <laughs> You've never heard of it. <laughs> it's really neat. Um, and uh, this other paper is a fast file system for Unix. That talks a little bit about how things are actually stored on a hard drive, which is cool. Like, how do you choose you know, which block to put things in? Mm -hmm. Cylinders, different speeds and stuff. And that's kind of cool if you're into that kind of thing. But uh, both of those are very readable. Huh. Anywho, that's it. Oh. Any, uh, any questions? Uh, you said something about making He's saying yesterday, maybe make, when you make a link with LN, the mm -hmm. S flag does something different? Yeah, so there's a symbolic link. Symbolic. So, so when you do a hard link, uh, I could be lying, but I'm pretty sure I'm not about this one. When you do a hard link, 
uh, you're referencing the same inode, right? So hard link can only be, uh, you can only have hard links on the same physical device. So like you can, if a file's on one hard drive, you can only hard link, add hard links uh, on that drive, right? Um, if you have a symbolic link, you don't need that, which is kind of a nice, nice thing. I forget so how it's a there would be if you're linking to a file on a network or on, a, another, on another drive? Sure. So like if you had a, like a second hard drive on your computer and you wanted right. to link to another yeah. one? Yep. It might not always be mounted. Or if you had a different partition on the same hard drive. Right. Right. Sure. So that's, and that's pretty common, right? Yeah. So like if you're using, I don't know, Gen 2 or something, and you have uh, a separate boot partition, right. then you might want to link to that in your regular partition, but... You can't use a hard link because it's a different physical device, so you would need to use a, a symbolic link. Yeah. And now there, there are other advantages, but I can't remember what they are right now. <laughs> Anything else? So that means there's probably a cap on like how many inodes a machine can have. Mm -hmm. Does it have that integer? Like, yeah. If you got like yeah. two billion files. Machine yep, at a certain point. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what kind of file system you use, but they all have caps on, mm, I don't want to say they all, but most of the ones that I'm aware of have caps on how many files you can have and how big those files can be. So like uh, one of the things that FFS was addressing, <coughs> the fast file system was addressing, was how do you have, you know, how, mm, it's not what it was addressing, but it, it discusses limitations like that. Uh, it's kind of cool. Eventually, you run out of inodes, yeah. and your file system just goes, and uh, it's all over. But you need to have a lot of files to yeah. do that, and they but need to be very like small files, right? That, mm -hmm. the, so that's a concern. Very much um, some file systems, so you, you can make those trade-offs, uh, like you can you can make trade-offs involving block size, for example, and you can make trade-offs on how many inodes you can have. Uh, and different file systems do make those trade-offs differently, so they have different performance characteristics. When you say different file systems, are you referencing like Mac, Windows, you know? Uh, yeah, so even those OSs use different file systems. So Windows had a couple different file systems. FAT was the oh, old one, that's okay. if you remember that one. Yeah. And uh, NTFS yeah. is the newer one. Yeah. And for all I know, there's another one now. Um, on Mac, you usually use uh, HFS, HFS Plus, but you can also use, I think there's like an older BSD style one that you can build off of, but I don't remember which one it is. And in Linux, you've got a, a rich cornucopia of incompatible file systems, which is wonderful. <laughs> you've got Ricer and JFS and XFS and EXT2, 3, and 4, and blah, 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 blah. And you can, you can change around most of your operating systems to read different, like if, if you have a, you, you can add like a kernel module to Linux to say, hey, now you can read NTFS. Uh, and I think you can even write to it now, which you didn't used to be able to, and that was a big hassle. But uh, yeah, as long as your kernel knows how to interpret that file system. So it's not based on operating system exactly, it's, it's a format. Anything else? Move! Oh. Okay, okay.